Good afternoon, dear students. My name is Ahmad Mustafa, lecturer of cardiology at Ain Shams University. Today, I will be explaining the cardiovascular system examination. First, you read the instructions and greet your patient and explain the procedure. And I am Dr. Ahmad Mustafa. Zay Hadertak, smile and face. You start by checking the hands for cyanosis. بعد إذنك إفرد إيدك قدامك. Then you relax the patient's hands and you start counting the radial pulse. After counting the pulse, you check both hands for the equality. Then you check for special character. في أي ألم في كتف حضرتك. You hold the the patient's hand with your left hand and then you raise the forearm like this and put your right hand here on the forearm of the patient. If there is water hammer pulse, you will feel pulsations at the upper border of your index finger. Then you relax the patient's hand and go for arterial blood pressure measurement. Make sure that not to insinuate the stethoscope below your cuff. The cuff should be three centimeter above the cubital fossa. Then you ask the patient to look slightly to the left. And you check for the veins, the jugular pulse. Normally you have two to three centimeter of neck pulsations just above the sternal angle. This is normal. Then you go for the lower limbs. After you finish checking the neck veins, you go to the lower limbs and you check two findings. First, you check the peripheral pulsations. You check the dorsalis pedis pulsations, lateral to the tendon of the extensor halsus longus. Here, it is palpable on both sides and equal. And then you check the shin of tibia. First, you ask the patient for pain and then you press the shin of tibia bilaterally and your eyes should be on the face of the patient. If the patient shows any pain, you should stop. Then, at this moment, you ask your patient to expose the chest and you check for three things. The apical pulsations, any other visible pulsations, scars, and dilated veins. Again, from the right side of the bed, you check the precordium and the whole chest for any scars, dilated veins, and any visible pulsations. Then, you start your palpations by, the, by finding the apex. First, with the palm of your, the, of your whole hand, and then you try to localize it normally, it is two finger breadth. The pulsation is two finger breadth. Then, to make sure that it is in the normal plane, you slide your hand across the manubrium. This is the sternal angle. You go a little bit lateral. This is the second space. And then you count the spaces. This is the third, the fourth, and the fifth. So the apex is in the fifth space, and it is in the mid-clavicular line. This is its normal position. And it has no thrill to it, and it has no special character. Then you check the rest of the pulsations and the rest of the areas for thrill. First, the base of the heart with the palm of your hand for the thrill, and then with the tips of your fingers for the pulsations, and then the parasternal area with the palms of your knuckles for pulsations and thrill, and then the epigastric pulsations with the tips of your fingers. Normally, you have epigastric pulsations coming from the aorta. Then you go for auscultation. You auscultate the Fundamental areas. First, we start with the apex. Then, you go to auscultate the cardiac base, the, aort the first aortic area, and the pulmonary area, with comparing the intensity of the second heart sound in both areas. Normally, the aortic area has a louder component or has louder S2 because of the aortic component. Then you auscultate the tricuspid area. Then lastly the third space and the second or the second aortic area. Then you tell the patient to lean forward. Tell the patient to lean forward and auscultate the second aortic area for the aortic regurgitation. Then you tell your patient to relax and you present your findings. What am I expecting from you in the findings? I'm expecting you to present the vital data, the, the findings in the local examination. For example, this, of course, this patient is normal. If you have a patient with rheumatic heart disease, you tell me that this patient is lying comfortably in bed or orthopnic. You tell me about the position. And then you tell the vital data, like the pulse. The pulse is 80 per minute, regular, equal on both sides, with no special character. And about the lower limb findings, there is no lower limb swelling and the peripheral positions are felt. 
By inspection and palpation, you tell me about the position of the apex. For example, it is in the fifth space in the midclavicular line. There is no other palpable pulse or thrill. On auscultation, you comment on three findings. First, the heart sounds itself, the first and the second heart sound, and then you comment on any, on any uh, murmur that you find. And last but not least, you tell me the diagnosis and if there is any sign of heart failure or infective endocarditis. Thank you. You'll be asked about what investigations does the patient need. You give basic investigations and specific investigations. Your basic investigations should include a CBC, and if the patient has valve replacement or atrial fibrillation, you should do an INR and a chest X-ray. Specific investigations should be an echo and even a transesophageal echo if you are suspecting infective endocarditis or a patient with a prosthesis is presenting with heart failure. Regarding treatment, if the patient presents with fever, you should be aware of the infective endocarditis. We give intravenous antibiotics for a long period of time and even surgical management if needed. Uh, and that's all. Thank you.